Hey, Holly. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Got my helmet head. <laughs> yeah, the virtual background helmet head. <laughs> All right. Well, we're uh, waiting for people to uh, trickle in here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. We're excited to talk to you today about lease-ups. And uh, uh, I think it's a very relevant topic, even though, well, hopefully there's more lease-ups coming online here in a little bit. I know construction has been a little bit uh, out of whack for the last 12 months. But uh, in the meantime, while we're all uh, sitting and waiting for the webinar to start, uh, go ahead in, in the chat. Uh, if you could put your favorite Olympic sport to watch, uh, and we'll stick to Summer Olympics since that's where we're at right now. And uh, I will go on record saying that my favorites are ping pong and uh, badminton because uh, I think of myself as being decent at ping pong or like, okay, at, at racket sports. And then I watch the professionals and it's unbelievable. And it, it, it's like magic to me. So uh, that's my favorite. What about you, Ollie? Uh I think I saw Mary write in that she liked gymnastics and that's one of my favorites too. I honestly didn't even know that ping pong was an Olympic sport. <laughs> what? You've never watched Olympic ping, you're in for a treat. If I wasn't going to derail the whole webinar, I'd pull up a compilation of all the greatest hits right now on YouTube. And uh, yeah, oh, surfing. Yeah, that's a new one uh, this year, I think. So there's a, a bunch that are new and then some that are getting cut and uh, I know we missed out on the gold for softball this year, and then apparently they're going to cut it for 2024. So uh, who knows what the, that could be the last softball gold medal. Wow. We got a street skateboarding. That's a cool one. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, we uh, are going to be talking about lease ups and uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, if you have a question, please either use the Q&A function or put it in the chat. And we're, we have a dedicated Q&A time that we'll get to at the very end. Uh, and um, we'll do our best to answer any and all questions as they come through. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this started here. If I can find my little screen share button. All right. Is everyone uh, seeing that? Can you give me an affirmative in the chat? If you can see, Holly, you can see it. Okay, that's good. I just saw that tra somebody put trampoline as their favorite. That's a very cool one too. So uh, I'm, I'm down with the Olympic trampoline. All right. Uh, so today we're talking about lease up marketing strategies for 2021. Uh, and um, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Andrew Cedarland. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Conversion Logics. And joining me today is uh, I'll call her the Lease Up Whisperer, uh, Holly. You want to introduce yourself, Holly? Uh, yes, I don't know about that. Um, yes, hello, I'm Holly Rodriguez, a regional sales director here based out of the Phoenix area. I've been with Conversion Logics for six years now, uh, working with multifamily uh, communities, all various stages of their uh, lease up stages. Uh, and stabilized assets. And uh, prior to that, gosh, I was thinking about it. I've been in marketing, sales and marketing now for over 20 years. So uh, some of these things that we're talking about today are just marketing things and other things are, you know, real specific to the multifamily. So excited to share some information with everyone today. Awesome. We'll have to uh, update your signature to have Lisa whisper in it after this. <laughs> Uh, so for those of you that don't know, uh, we're uh, from Conversion Logics. Uh, we're a digital media agency and a software company. So on the digital marketing side of things, we do paid search, paid social, um, display, retargeting, email, uh, pretty much everything you can imagine to drive the best uh, quality traffic to your website. And then we also built uh, our a lead conversion and attribution platform called the Conversion Cloud. And it's a mix of different modules like a scheduler, uh, you know, Schedule Genie to do automated scheduling, uh, concession managers so you can mix and match offers. There's texting and a few others. Uh, and then there's also a lead attribution side so you can see the lead journey for each prospect that comes in and converts. Uh, and so far, I believe we're at 500,000 uh, leads and counting. So um, maybe we'll be at 1 billion sold McDonald's style here soon, but we'll, we'll settle for half a million for right now. So today we're going to talk about uh, breaking through uh, the modern media 
landscape? You know, how do you do that? It's really hard. People are so distracted. And, you know, what does it look like to really get uh, somebody to pay attention to your brand? You know, the lease ups are challenging. Uh, you're building something from nothing. It's not an established brand or, or community that's been around for a long time and uh, can, you know, pull from a, from a database. You're starting from scratch. And regardless of the industry, that's, that's a very hard thing to do. Uh, then Holly's going to take us through different strategies and how we tailor those to each stage of the lease up process. And then we're going to talk about a couple of success stories and then we'll get to Q&A. So if you have questions, please put them in and we'll answer them when the time comes. So breaking through the modern media landscape. And so, like I said before, it's a hard thing to break through these days. Uh, we have very poor attention span and we also spend a lot of time on our phones doing lots of different things. And so we uh, get hit up uh, left and right and center. And so uh, just a couple of, you know, wanted to give context around why this is so difficult. So we spend almost eight hours a day on our phone doing media activities, which is just insane to me, uh, though I'm right there with that stat. So I shouldn't think it's that insane. Uh, and the average mobile user, at least according to this study, checks their phone 63 times a day. I've seen other studies that say it's over 100. And so what that means is lots of short bursts of interaction um, and so it makes it difficult, you know, you don't have somebody's full attention like you used to. So we know people spend a lot of time uh, on devices and you can see here on the left side, uh, there's a breakdown of which type of device people spend their time on. So you can see in 2021, 263 minutes spent on a mobile device, uh, 119 spent on a desktop or a laptop. And the big change uh, for this last year uh, a lot of it's driven from COVID and time at home is 198 minutes on other connected devices. And so those are uh, smart TVs, connected TVs, uh, iPads. And I think just in general, people upped their media consumption. And you can see that's why it drops in 2022, or it's projected to drop a little bit in 2022 and 2023 is just less time spent at home, but uh, just a huge amount of time um, spent cross device doing different activities. Uh, then on the right side, there's a pie chart showing when you break down and look at that, you know, time spent on mobile, okay, what is that? What is that made up of? And you can see on the bottom, 63 minutes on social networks, 51 minutes on video. We have 76 minutes of audio, which is podcasts, uh, and then last is sort of a catch-all, 73 minutes of other, which is you know browsing the web, playing apps. Uh, if there was a, you know, there's probably a non-existent sliver in there of actually talking on the phone, but no one ever really does that anymore, so. Uh, this is uh, pretty much what we do is uh, consume media and um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. And then when you break down the time spent on a mobile device, you know, on social networks, you can see that there's a variety that people spend their time on. And so it's not enough to just say, I'm going to target this device or I'm going to target social, you know, there's just so many different ways uh, and places that people can connect with your brand. And that's why uh, it's so uh you know, frankly, difficult to, to kind of break through and build up this uh, persona, especially when, you know, you're doing most of it online. So it's really hard to connect with people. So what does a breakthrough moment actually look like? And, you know, what is it, what is a breakthrough moment? So we just think of breakthrough moments as when a target audience actually pays attention to your brand and remembers your offer. And so it's, you know, they've, they've seen it, they've connected with it and they've retained it. Uh, and so in order to actually create this moment, we have to be able to capture their attention, which like we said, is a little difficult. And then when we get that attention, we have to deliver a relevant and compelling message. We have to make sure that we have the messaging right and the media right. And we have to be memorable. It's not enough to just do it one, you know, it's like working out. Advertising is like exercise. You can't work out really well one time and expect that it's gonna stick. It's, it's you know, you have to do lots of different machines and lots of different weights uh, over the course of a period of time to see results. Uh, and I think that, you know, advertising, especially for a lease up uh, is, is similar to that. So the first part is creating a is uh, capturing attention. And so in order to actually capture attention, you have to guess what, be everywhere. And so this is cross device, cross channel. And, uh, and so you can see here that goes from search, that's video, that's, you know, passive activities of I'm watching YouTube or I'm, you know, watching uh, connected TV to active things like I'm actually researching well, paid search and, um, you know, maybe paid social, depending on where they're, uh, where they're looking and some of their habits in the past. And it's really important that the messaging is, uh, I guess, relevant across each different channel and is all cohesive to help build that brand. 
And then once we get the opportunity to get in front of somebody, so we have our, you know, we've, we have our strategy in place to reach these people. Now, what are we going to put in front of them? And it's important that we put our best foot forward and that we, uh, the message is correct. And so there's lots of different elements that you can include as part of your lease up, uh, you know, location, price, lifestyle, you can see them listed here. There's, there's more that aren't included. And throughout the uh, life cycle of the property, some of these are going to change. You're going to start with location and lifestyle. Then as floor plans get you know, built out and as prices become available, you can add and, and mix and match a few more things in. But you can see here on the right, there's an example of an ad that you know, we've had the breakthrough opportunity and we want to make the most of it. And so you can see that we're you know, highlighting uh, the location, you know, walkable, highly desirable um, location. There's a call to, clear call to action of going and taking a virtual tour. You can see a lot of photos. And then there's also a great offer, which helps tip people over the edge. Here's an example of how this looks in a cohesive strategy. So this is Beam Apartments, which is uh, located uh, near Capitol Hill in the Seattle market, if you're familiar with the area. Uh, you can see here right in the middle, it says live on the bright side. That's kind of their, their mantra. And they're really focused on natural light, which is important to us up here in Seattle. Uh, Holly's in Phoenix, so I said that for her, it's all about uh, how dark is the tint on the glass windows. And you'll see in Seattle, all these buildings are all glass, and it's like, how big can you get the windows? So uh, very different from other markets, of course. Uh, and so you can see in the middle, you know, they're really prioritizing this light, airy feeling. And then on the right side, you can see uh, in their YouTube ad, they really uh, do a great job of highlighting that with the materials that they've chosen, uh, and then the way that they've, uh, you know, done the photography to help uh, you know use that in different uh, assets whether it's an ad on facebook or a display ad or in this case a youtube video and then on the left side you can see that you know they prioritize uh, it might be a little bit hard to read but it says live on the bright side you know 98 walk score and a 100 tra transit score so it's all about location um, you know new apartments and uh, they really are trying to make sure that it's cohesive and that every time that you interact with their brand it, it's a um, a message that resonates. And so it's not enough, you know, it's not an apartment that has been around for a while that has the benefit of, hey, I can, you know, do a basic campaign and, and get my occupancy from 90 to 95. It's, you know, it's a tough thing to go from zero to 100. So those are a few examples of, you know, how we try to craft uh, our campaigns to break through and, and get people uh, interested. And so uh, now, Holly, uh, you're going to talk us through a little bit about, you know, what specifically goes into each stage and what we try to do and, and um, you know, we're really what the goal is, I guess, for each stage of the lease up. So uh, go ahead. Great, wonderful, well, thank you. Uh, so much great stuff that you just reviewed and I was thinking about it as, as you were going through the information and that, that word breakthrough is just so powerful because it really does describe what we're trying to do is, is how do we get that message to resonate? And I think one of the things that we have to be cognizant of as marketers is that breakthrough moment will be different for many people. And as much as we want it to be the call to action on a social ad or the search in on Google on a paid search ad, that is might just be one component and the breakthrough might happen somewhere else. So I think that is part of what we have to do when we're bringing it all together, especially with a new brand, a new name, a new community uh, that nobody is uh, super familiar with yet. That's that's really uh, just launching. So um, let's go ahead. We have four distinct stages that we really look at in this lease up cycle. Uh, the first one we call coming soon stage. Uh, you know, this is where we really start our advertising. Uh, your community may not be finished yet. People might see it driving by. It might look like the picture here on the screen. And it's our job to really instill some excitement uh, and give people a notice that something exciting is coming. And our goal here is to really utilize our, our website asset to collect names, email addresses, start connecting with our customers. Uh, we know that thousands of people visit a website each month and many of them go unnamed. And our job as marketers is to put a name, email address and hopefully a phone number. For those of us that do still talk on the phone, I'm one of them, um, uh, to put some contact information around your prospects so you can really connect and engage with them later on in the process when you're ready uh, to connect with that individual. Uh, so this is very early stage. Uh, 
you know, one thing that stuck out to me in one of your earlier slides, Andrew, was that YouTube has really risen to the top of social networks. And we consume video on YouTube and we've probably all heard it, pictures worth a thousand words. I wonder how many words a video is worth in our world today. Uh, with all that we're inundated with in terms of messages online, uh, many people, myself included, want that video to be informative and quick and serve my needs with what I'm looking for at the time. So uh, one strategy, I'll just, I guess I'll jump ahead here a little bit, bumper ads on, on YouTube, a six second ad, if you can imagine it, uh, because our attention span is what, eight, probably less than 30 seconds anymore. Um, and six seconds gives, delivers a very powerful coming soon, um, just gets people excited about it. Lots of impressions, lots of frequency, lots of reach. So that's an example of something that we might want to uh, put into this coming soon stage. Okay, uh, let's uh, move ahead to the next stage that we have, which we call our pre-leasing stage. You know, this is when your website might still be a bit of a landing page, but you've maybe opened up some pricing information to individuals or call now, maybe apply now type messaging. This is a stage of the process that can be um, a little bit like confusing for your prospects because they know that it's soon, but they don't know when, they don't know the particulars, they don't know if they can come in to see a model, uh, they don't know your exact move-in date. So when we're marketing during this phase, we want to drive these people to the website and give them a little bit more information. Engagement is huge as we get into these later stages of the, of the process. We want to make sure that should your prospect want to go to the next stage of the leasing journey, which is tell me more information or how do I apply, that that individual is taken care of with some sort of strategy on your website, uh, be it a live chat option or, uh, I mean, everybody has seen the, the modules that are now on the screen, allowing you to claim an offer or schedule a tour. All of these things have exploded, especially in the wake of COVID. So give your, give your prospect an opportunity to connect with you because if you don't, they will find a place to go do so. Uh, so let's make sure that our marketing dollars are leveraged and optimized uh, to encourage this interaction and engagement. Yeah, and Holly, I know when we were talking yesterday that you had a great stat about Curve in particular with their uh, conversion oh. or live chat. I'd love for you to share that if you could. Yes, thank you. Uh, Curve is a uh, lease up in the Los Angeles market. And uh, we started advertising just a few months ago and uh, they're getting ready to open later this summer. And we, we started advertising and we added a live chat and the conversion cloud modules right around, uh, right around June. And the, the, the week after we added, I mean, I looked at the volume of this and we've had well over 200 leads come in in the last 60 days of from the various modules that are in place here, you know, people wanting more information. They don't have a big leasing staff right now. They're not even open yet. So let these modules do the work. Let them feel as though they're being attended to and taken care of. Um, that is a, a huge key. And this, and this community now has a, a long wait list of highly interested prospects that they can give to their leasing team for future follow-up and take them along that leasing journey. So it just goes to show how that volume increases and intensifies as you give people the opportunity to engage. That's great. Yeah. Okay, the now open stage. It's probably, I mean, this is kind of the, the stage that I look forward to most because I always see the, the biggest jump in engagement, the biggest jump in click activity. You know, it's almost like people are out there kind of watching and looking, and then you put now open on the ads and they, you know, the floodgates open. And uh, it's a real important time frame for you to get that message out and use as many channels as possible to communicate that you're now open. Uh, we frequently will do this with a series of email campaigns that are sent out to your previous prospects who visited the websites during stages one and two. 
inviting them to either virtual or on-site showings at the community so they can really be in the model. One thing we learned during COVID was that while everybody shifted their research and activities uh, pre-leasing to the online environment out of necessity, there was still some hesitancy in leasing an apartment sight unseen. So we know they like to uh, interact with the people that are leasing up the community. We know they like to see and touch the finishes. Uh, so it's important to offer that op option and or uh, you know, provide some virtual tour options. That is hugely successful in this stage when people are ready to you know, quote unquote buy or lease, uh, that they can actually see the, the community in a, in a little bit more real light with, with the type of virtual tour. Uh, this is also the time frame when a lot of communities will, will bring on their leasing specials to try to bring some early stage momentum to that leasing process, offer some incentives to get people to, to sign and move in quickly. And this is where I will also <laughs> mention, some of you have worked with me before, know my analogy about the party bus, right? So our media acts as the party bus. Uh, we wanna pick up and bring as many people to your party, which is your website, as possible uh, and show them a great time, right? As the party host, you want people to be excited to be there. And it's up to you to deliver a great party once they get there. So um, particularly, we really try to hone in during those now open and brand new stage that I'll talk about next to just really key in on that audience that will find the most benefit from your community now that you've gotten the buzz started about it. Okay, uh, this is often the stage where we find more model images, where we actually have virtual tours to put online. Uh, this is the stage that will take you uh, hopefully to the end of your uh, lease up cycle and get you to stabilization. Uh, this is the time when we're going to update image, imagery frequently to give people a good idea of the different options that you have available at the community, amenities, and in the apartment. Uh, try to get them excited about coming in and scheduling that tour, calling out specific floor plans. You know, this is a great way for luxury apartments to utilize the different platforms to highlight penthouses, for instance, if you have those available to lease. I have some communities that have a plethora of one floor plan or another. This is, a, this is the time frame when you really start making sure that you have a lot of focus on those particular uh, floor plans that you have need for. Great. All right. Thanks, Holly. So now, uh, you know, kind of gone through the media mix and the cycles, and I think we have a couple of great uh, examples of what does it look like to put this in practice. So uh, go ahead, Holly. Great. So uh, first off, I'll say, although I work with a number of lease up communities and, and structure campaigns and have done so, I have a colleague base of close to 20 account managers that work with me here at Conversion Logics who have, we, we work together to share our war stories about what works and uh, what works better. You know, here's some out of the box thinking. So all of us at Conversion Logics work in our markets and, and uh, regions to support all stages of lease that process. Uh, but I do uh, some work, a lot of work actually in Southern California and in downtown LA. And, you know, <laughs> We can't ignore what happens, what the, the situation we're in, and particularly 2020, what happened with COVID. Prior to our lockdown situation and uh, the pandemic, we've always thought of, you know, location, location, location. Like that is such an important part of what real estate is to be on that corner, to be next to that retail device environment, to be right near that financial district so that the people that work there can walk to work or, or easily commute. That was upended last year. And a lot of clients that I worked with in urban markets felt a little bit lost because a lot of people did move away from that urban environment. And, and they were left with, I have this great location, which I know is going to come back but now people aren't walking up and down my street anymore. I, you know, what do I do? So we really had to transform the location, location, location uh, message to, to online. And, you know, how can you communicate 
that you are in this great location. And the, the goal is it, the, 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 the way to do that is through a comprehensive strategy. And going back to what you pointed out earlier, Andrew, was just being in the platforms where your people are. They're not walking down the street anymore. Okay, well, where are they? They're watching Netflix. They're watching YouTube. They're online. They're on their phone. Okay, well, let's be there and let's be in that location so that they then understand where they will be living in this other great location. So that's been a really big focus for me in some of the urban markets. You'll see there the campaign tactics that we have in place for this particular uh, new community in downtown LA. It's very comprehensive. Uh, they're doing you know, just about everything they can, not only just with conversion logics, but they've done a great job uh, you know, dovetailing their efforts into social, for instance, with organic posts and um, engaging Instagram stories, things that, you know, we help get their audience interested and they keep them there with compelling content um, that keeps them coming back. So we can continue to, to remarket to those individuals and invite them back. Their lease up process was a little bit longer uh, than normal. They, they were in pre-leasing for a little bit longer time frame than we typically would see with a lease up. However, uh, now that we are now open here, we are well on our way to achieving stabilization, hopefully by the end of the year. And we've done this in some unique ways. Uh, we, did, we did open this community during COVID and when there were still lockdowns going on. And we got creative with well, where are we going to find our audience? Maybe our audience isn't really in downtown LA right now. Uh, maybe we have to think outside the box and look at targeting audiences in other urban markets maybe a cold urban market, you know, where people really love that, that downtown living experience, but maybe want more of an LA climate. Um, you know, for those of you who might understand the Chicago or New York areas, if you don't have to be in your office all the time anymore, you know, why not relocate? So we, we used some of the adversity as, as strengths in our campaigns and started attracting audiences uh, that would be a good fit for this community. Uh, that we may not have had to do otherwise uh, without without COVID. Descriptive keywords using you know words like high rise and penthouse and luxury and and all of those things in the campaign. I will say that one of the most powerful things that this community did because they did such a great job just with their imagery and the messaging and helping people understand that they were luxury lease up. We pivoted a little bit in late December and uh, added a pricing. A message to their ads. And I suggested trying it because I, they were running a strong concession. And I said, well, you know, why don't you let, give people an understanding of what that concession means, or, you know, in a price point communication. And when we did that, they really just had such an influx of interested individuals who, who I think thought, wow, I didn't really realize that, that I could, that I could do this right now. And Great, great offer, great promotion, great place. Um, so we capitalized on that. And I think the next slide, Andrew, probably shows what, what their website session activity did. So we did the now open message in mid-October. Uh, so you can see that kind of rise right there, but we added the pricing message in December and you, you can really see the spike. And, and initially, uh, we had kind of thought about, well, maybe we'll just let it run for two weeks or so and then remove it. But the results were so fantastic that we decided to keep it there. And it did remain competitive pricing for several months. It, it, it got them leased up with some base inventory. We've since removed it because it's not as attractive anymore as they're leasing their higher end units, but it was a great strategy to put some, some base apartment leases on the, on the books for them. And great engagement opportunities. Again, I can't stress enough all the time that you spent marketing and advertising and, and the investment that you make, you must give people a, a way to what we call a convert, you know, to give them your name and, and, and email address information online so that you can then move to the next step of the process, which is for your leasing team to follow up with a real person. That's great. And I think what you said, Holly, is just a great example of they did, they put so much work into the first few stages of the lease up that when the time came that they were able to put a pricing message, they had already built and had breakthrough moments with people and had this list of a couple of thousand people that they could easily tap 
to, to um, you know, get some units leased, which I think is just a great, uh, great way to, to use that cycle. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, another uh, lease up, I wanted to highlight this. It's, it's in Riverside, so not a, a heavy urban market, very different from downtown LA. Um, this community is actually not far from a major California university uh, where they do, they had anticipated getting quite a bit of traffic from that student base, that the master's students, the graduate students, some of the upperclassmen. And uh, when travel was restricted internationally in 2020, uh, when the campus was closed to in-person learning, they were left with more inventory available than, than they had wanted. And it actually affected the whole market. So uh, we really had to work to find ways to lease up this community uh, with a smaller demand than they had. It was smaller demand and then overbuilt supply. And, and the supply had been planned for in 2018, 2019, uh, anticipating the 2020 demand would be there. And then COVID kind of squelched that. So, you know, what do we do here? Well, you know, knowing that it, it wasn't going to go on forever, this community did put a lot of emphasis on, on video and social ads in addition to your standard, you know, paid search, you know, what I call the foundation of your media plan, uh, but really try to engage those prospects that they, they knew were on the social channels a lot and, and watching videos and using those strategies to deliver a compelling leasing message. And you'll see, that as time went on, uh, late 2019, we were we were at a uh, up to six weeks free type message, and and gradually took took that that uh, promotional message down a bit, and I'll add added virtual tour plans as as a we used a mechanism so that if somebody gave gave us their name, address, phone number, we would automatically send them a link to a virtual tour plan for a two bedroom. And in this case, this community has a lot of two bedrooms. So we were merchandising those two bedrooms uh, effectively. We were getting somebody's name, email address, and phone number and getting fuel uh, for future follow-up uh, touch points uh, to create that breakthrough moment. So while this lease up looks a little different in terms of their growth and the line for website sessions looks, you know, maybe a little, a little bit more gentle slope and, and was there for a little bit longer period of time. Um, this community did stabilize earlier this year. Um, they are full and have a waiting list. And uh, now that school is scheduled to reopen next year, we, um, we're hopeful that that momentum will continue. And, you know, the great thing is the lease up stage is, is a definitive time period. And, you know, once you reach stabilization, we can start really, you know, slimming back on some of the, the efforts needed to drive new eyes to the site. Uh, really to, to, to know that you have a brand new product that nobody knows about, you just have to accept that you need lots of impressions, lots of, lots of reach, lots of frequency. And this just requires a comprehensive strategy in the beginning to set you up for success in the long run. Yeah, that's a great point. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to open it up to questions for people. We Hopefully we didn't go too quick through that, but um, it looks like kind of one question that came in already, Holly, for you is, uh, you know, if you're going to boil down uh, what a lease up, you know, the lease up process, boil it down in a, in a word or in a sentence or two, you know, how would you describe it and what's like the best um, strategy for success? It looks like. Oh, gosh, Andrew, it's hard for me to boil anything down to one sentence. You know, I think really it's paramount to have a, a succinct message that resonates with your target audience and to deliver that succinct message in a way that ensures a lot of impressions and a lot of reach, because you need to touch somebody seven to 10 times before they have unedited brand recall. Um, that goes back to billboard advertising days, right? That, that hasn't changed. And I'm getting longer than a sentence here, but you know, <laughs> one thing that stuck in my mind 
having done marketing now for 20 years and, and seeing Travelocity.com as a new website, that's how old I am. We thought that when digital advertising was an opportunity for us as marketers, that it would be, you know, less expensive, more targeted. We would know what everybody was doing. We didn't have to rely on magazines because who knew what anybody did when they looked at a magazine or a billboard anymore. And truly throughout my years of, of doing this, I have found that because of the noise, to your point, all those, all those impressions of all those other things, now it's a different strategy. Sure, we can target people. Sure, we can see that they click. Sure, we can see they came back to the website, but they're, they're doing it in other ways too. So what are you doing to stand out that's different and, and interesting to your target audience? And let's focus on that in the advertising and encourage people to engage with us. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, it just comes back to the, the medium and the message. Yeah. Uh, great. Well, uh, one other question here, just easy one that I can answer is, will this deck be shared out? Yes, uh, we'll have the slides available as well as a recording. Uh, and so it'll get emailed to you and it'll also be available to uh, grab on our website as well. Uh, and so we'll leave a little bit more time uh, for questions here, but I'll just move through to kind of the main uh, takeaways here is, you know, number one is it's important to create those breakthrough moments. You know, we, like I said at the very beginning, starting anything from scratch and building it up from nothing is, is a difficult proposition. Uh, and it's important to, uh, you know, really be everywhere and, uh, and really capitalize, like Holly was saying, on your message on, you know, what's your unique selling proposition? Why should someone choose you over another building that is more familiar. Uh, number two is leveraging lead capture tools. You know, we, we're gonna use the party bus. I'll take your analogy, I love that. Uh, use the party bus, bring people to the website. And then, you know, we wanna have our, uh, our appetizers set up and our drink coupons or whatever they are to, to try and get people to, to come to, into the party uh, by giving us their name, email, and, and phone number. And, uh, and then last is really just diversifying across different channels. You know, we, we wanna make sure that, you know, reaching the target audience uh, wherever they may be uh, and doing what we can to uh, get in front of the right person, the right place, the right time, which, you know, we all know is marketing 101, but uh, in practice, it, it uh, you know, it can be uh, somewhat complicated, but uh, when you boil it down, it's, it's as simple as that. So uh, it looks like uh, that's all the questions that we have today. So uh, if you are interested in know in more information about, you know, either us as a company or, or want us to, you know, look at a campaign or look at case studies, uh, you can, you know, go to our website, uh, you can um, chat with us or, or schedule a time for us to take a look at uh, what you've got going on. There's um, lots of great information on our blog, and uh, we're happy to help you with uh, whatever you need. And so with that, I will uh, say thank you, Holly, for uh, being, uh, yeah, being on the panel today and uh, being the, the resident LISEP expert. So thank you for, uh, for joining me and um, helping uh, uh, yeah, helping, I guess, uh, share some of these great results uh, with people out there. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, enjoy. Uh, I know that right now you're going to go watch some ping pong and badminton highlights from the Olympics since you uh, <laughs> didn't know that that was a sport. So that's what I'm going to go do too. And uh, everyone have a great day and uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Bye. Bye.